Hey guys, welcome back to the McKeel's Woodworks. Today we're going to be renovating our kitchen. Stay tuned to the very end because we've got something very exciting for you. There's a couple pictures of the old kitchen and here's about halfway through where we painted the cabinets. We're going to go ahead and install some concrete countertops. We have to take the sink out so we can get the countertops off. And then once we get the countertops off, then we can start forming up the concrete countertops. All right, moving right along here, going to be taking the old countertops out. Going to be putting a new sink in. And to do this, we're going to need some reinforcers. Going to use some two by fours. And this just gives us something to bite into when we're screwing the half inch Dura Rock down. And as you can see, we are getting ready to put the Dura Rock in. So you want to pre cut your Dura Rock, set it down, and use a uh, special. Dura Rock screw that's threaded all the way through. See, setting the undermount sink on top of the 2x4 box out. And then we're going to be using some plastic. This is a very important step. You do not want to skip this step because this is going to catch all of the drain off of the concrete. It'll protect the faces of your cabinets. We're going to be using the patented counter form from Z Concrete Solutions. We went ahead and uh, scooped up a half of a package. You'll notice on their website you can buy half or full bundle. So we went with the half. It was perfect. I think it's 24 linear feet is what we have. And it was uh, just right down to the, we had about a foot left over. So it was perfect. As you can see, uh, we want to use those screws and screw down the Z countertop. And then you want to use caulk and caulk the gap. This will uh, prevent there from being too much concrete drizzle off and uh, you just want to mitigate as much as you can with the extra concrete that leaks through. To make sure that your corners are sharp and clean you want to use a very sticky duct tape and uh, as you can see here just taking some time you want to make sure that these corners are good because how this sets up is uh, how, exactly how it's going to look when it's formed. So. It will not change much and it looks messy right there, but there's the Dura Rock, there's the caulk, there's the screws, and there's the duct tape. We got the plastic underneath. All right, it is time to pour. All right, so for our mixing, we're going to portion out a few different things. We've got our fiberglass enforcer. This is from the Z countertops. And we're gonna do two cups of this because we went with the uh, pro finish concrete with the fiberglass enforcer. So we're essentially doing two enforcers. So I'm going to do half a bucket of concrete, three cups of enforcer, and then this is what we're going to use for our pigment coloring is May Springs. And I'm going to do a um, quarter scoop, which is this is two ounces, so it would be about three quarters of an ounce of May Springs black pigment. And then we've got these other colorings, which we'll put in the finish. These are just a liquid dye you can get from Amazon. They're uh, going to be dripped into the top portion and kind of swirled in. Just add a little texture to the concrete. And then with all that being said, we're going to put some water in and just get it to a nice pancake batter consistency. Ready? All right, so for the mix, we're going to be uh, doing equal portions because we want this to be equally as strong throughout the concrete. So that's why if you're asking, why are you portioning all of this stuff out? It's because I want the same color and same consistency throughout the whole pour. I started with a bucket and a drill, but that proved to be a little too slow and my drill was burning up. So I switched to a wheelbarrow and a shovel. One thing we forgot to mention was the wire mesh. So prior to mixing your concrete, you want to pre-cut all of your mesh. Now you want the mesh to be in the middle of the concrete. You can either buy the pre-cut um, stands that Z Countertop makes, or you can do it the way that I've been doing it for many years, which is cut them to size, do a dry fit, and then when you get concrete in there, like this, as you can see the video, I'm pouring my concrete and then once you get about half of that bed filled with concrete, you just lay the mesh in the middle. Nice and easy. I mean, never have any problems with it. As you see, the, there's concrete underneath that mesh. It's perfect. Just hit it with a vibrator and 
it'll vibrate in. And then you can start to finish the concrete, which leads us to the trawl. And you can use a float, as you can see, just push it in. And then once you're done floating it, vibrate it. Once you're done vibrating it, when the water starts to wick towards the top, you can use a trawl, which is up on the right side of the screen, and use a trawl to finish the concrete. One of the things that I would like to apologize for is not putting footage of the sink knockout. Well, one of the reasons that we don't have that footage is because it was a little shaky and we just decided not to put it in it. But Z Countertops actually makes a sink liner that you can use. It's just, it takes a couple weeks for it to get to us and we really wanted to pour this. So we came up with a foam insert and that was our solution to the problem. Here we are stripping the forms. You can see it's so easy. Just use a trawl to separate the concrete from the form and then put equal pressure on both sides and just push straight down and that patented countertop form pops right off. All right, so we're gonna be working on the backsplash. Gonna open up all these little squares. It takes a little bit of time, but you wanna get them prepped. Mix the mortar, apply it with a trawl, and just go ahead and start slapping up the backsplash. You want the spacing to be correct, so I went with just a cardboard spacer, made sure that the gap was even across the entire backsplash. You may not notice if there's a little air or a wider gap when you get it filled with mortar, but uh, my least favorite part of tile is when there's no mortar or grout inside of those cracks. So you wanna look at your uh, manufacturer and find out if you need sanded or non-sanded grout. This backsplash called for non-sanded grout. This is, has polymers in it. It's going to make it very durable and uh, last a long time. So you wanna go with non-sanded grout if you're gonna be doing a backsplash, let it get hazy, wipe it with a sponge. Mine took about six times, but once it's clean, you can put your fixtures back on. Once you get your fixtures back on, everything is good to go. It's time to go back to the countertop because it's been sitting for a few days. Cy Acryl 14, this is a product that Z Countertop makes. Prior to putting this on, you do wanna lightly sand the edges of the countertop with like a 120 grit. Just get those sharp corners off and you could put the Cyacryl 14 on top of your counter. This is going to keep it protected against acidic elements like lemon juice and raw chicken. It'll wipe right off. It's a little waxy and it makes it shine just slightly. You want to put some trims in your kitchen after the countertops are up because not everything is going to be perfect, but the trim will hide those imperfections. And as you can see, we just taped them up. I put a liquid nail behind this trim against the backsplash. So I just had to tape it in place for about 12 hours for it to cure. Filled those gaps with uh, some silicone. All right, gonna be pushing the new gas range into place. That thing is just beautiful. Sliding the new faucet into place and just attaching it from underneath the sink. That's an American standard setup there. All right, guys, look at this kitchen. Oh my gosh, look, the before is just dark. It's There's too much wood. There's a fan in the kitchen. And here's the after. It's just modern. It's sharp looking. It's bright. It's light. And it only took a few hundred bucks. If you're thinking of doing a kitchen renovation, I believe in you. You can do it. Make some mistakes along the way. Have a good time. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to get the latest and greatest of what we're doing. Thanks for checking out our channel. We'll see you next time.